record right now. Um, I have a couple things to go over before I hand over the reins to Miss Shanique. Um, she is our newest official diamond on our team and absolutely crushing the business. But I wanted to go over a few housekeeping things before we get rocking and rolling here. So first and foremost, Every single one of you who is on this team call has three promo codes um, to get rid of this month. So that is an additional $12 off the already $20 off package. So you guys have three codes to get rid of before the end of the month. Guess what? That's Success Club 5. So it's never been easy to lock in Success Club 5. Also, if you... Uh, get rid of all three of your promo codes in the month of August, Beachbody is going to give you three new codes for September. How incredible is it going to be to have three new codes for those people who give you money objections when September is tight? Can I get an amen? So freaking excited for that. So guys, I want you to star big, bold letters. Like we are going to have like a rampage on our team right now to get rid of all of those promo codes. Um, number two, Britt, what the heck do I need to be inviting to? You need to be inviting to the Girly Games Nation Boot Camp. That is a six week challenge group that starts on September 2nd. The registration deadline, I want you guys to push for Friday. That way you get rid of all three codes by Friday. You have your Success Club 5 by Friday. And that way people, their package comes in before September 2nd. They're ready to rock. They're clear headed. And we're able to do an actual prep week. So that's what I'm super excited about. Um, <clears throat> so September 2nd, um, it's going to be friggin' bomb. Make sure you guys are plugged in. We're going to crush it. Number three, um, we have the social media um, academy, essentially, from the top coaches who are absolutely crushing social media in the Dynasty team page. So that is the Dynasty Together Transformed team page. Um, you guys must be in there. Bonnie Engel did her video yesterday. It was incredible. Today, Rebecca Rob, Rebecca Roberts, Robinson uh, did hers today. Guys, she's a professional photographer. She knows some things. Um, and her call today was freaking fire. So you must star that if you're all like, I don't know what to do with social media. You guys got to get on that. So it's happening for uh, the next three days as well. So make sure you guys do that. If you can't find it in the Dynasty page, they have it in the units section with a ton of other incredible training. So make sure that you guys are doing that. Um, and I'm going to leave the last exciting announcement for after the call. So, um, tonight we have the most incredible Shanique, as I said earlier, she is the newest diamond on Girly Games Nation. Um, that brings girls with grit and, uh, soon to be a new team name, I believe. Uh, so Sam's team is officially in one star qualify right now, which is so exciting. They have to hold that for the next, uh, four weeks. So super excited. And I am going to throw it over to Shanique to inspire the crap out of the rest of us. So I'll unmute you girl. And, uh, okay. Well, Hey guys. <laughs> um, so this is my, I feel like this is like my first team call that I'm hosting. So I'm kind of like anxious, excited to talk to y'all. <laughs> Hopefully it's good. Um, so yeah. I, Brittany asked me to come on and just talk about kind of like what sort of my mindset shifts that kind of got me from being an emerald for the last freaking two years <laughs> to a finally a diamond. So I was definitely not like a hit the ground running coach. Some, like, I feel like initially there was some hope for me. I started as a challenger in October of 2017. And just within that month, I really just I asked Sam in November, like a month later, I was like, what's coaching? Like, tell me more about it. So that's kind of how I started. And then in November, I hit Emerald and Success Club my first month. So I feel like people were like, damn, this is a dream coach right here. And guess what? I sat at Emerald for two freaking years. So I'm just like letting y'all know that you, I feel like you, like it's been a long time coming for me to hit this. So 
I'm nothing fancy, nothing special. It's taken me time and it's taken me getting out of my own way. Honestly, like the first year of my business wasn't a business. Like I straight up was not running a business. You guys, I was just dabbling in and out. I'd hit success club here and there. I joined in on team calls whenever I felt like it, like it wasn't a priority for me. And that just showed in my business because I didn't hit any milestones. Like I didn't really try. So, um, also if my Wi-Fi goes weird, let me know because I have Wi-Fi issues, so just let me know if I freeze up or anything. Um, so yeah, I it probably I've told people like I I started as a coach two years almost two years ago, but I feel like I've really been running a business for six months. Honestly, that's kind of when my mindset really shifted, and I was like, damn, I'm sick of playing small, and I'm sick of just kind of sitting here and not really being sure of where I want to take this. So. Um, I feel like Summit was a really big motivator for me as well. Um, Summit, I'm going to be honest with you, like that was an actually stressful decision for me. And I know that like Brittany and like Sam, they had been like, when are you getting your Summit ticket? When are you getting it? Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I'm going to get it. I promise. But I was so stressed out because I was a student. I didn't have money. I was like, how am I going to afford a ticket? How am I going to afford flights? Like all of that stuff. And I was just avoiding buying my ticket. I literally was like avoiding it like the plague. Um, so when I made that decision, like I have to go, like I knew in my gut I had to go. I was like, I can't keep putting this off. Like if I want this to be a business, I need to go to summit. And it was, so I went and I knew that coming back from summit, like I couldn't, I had to make it worth my, I had to make it worthwhile. I didn't want to be the coach that was excited at summit and then came home and was, did my usual, like, well, that was fun. I'm just gonna, whatever. I was like, no, I'm getting my money's worth out of this. I'm doing this thing. I'm done with the excuses. So that's kind of where I really had this like head down, focusing, getting shit done. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit about my story. I'm going to share. So I did a little PowerPoint. I love Canva and I have so much fun with it. And I was like, you know what? I'm making a little PowerPoint. So I came home yesterday after working through some together. So I hope I can remember how I even do this. How do I do this again? I did this before. Oh yeah. You're crushing it. Yep. Yeah, share screen. It is. Oh, open up, girl. there we go. Um, I think that's what I want to share. Okay. No, that's not the right one, but this is in my way. Why is this in my way? Ah, no. Like I want this little screens in the way. Do you know how to move that? <laughs> okay. We're just going to go through it like this guys. It's fine. Are you okay. saying like our pictures are in the way, Shanique? Like the top, at the top, it has like the mute, the stop video thing. Oh, yeah, that will probably just stay on there. Um, okay. On our screen, we can all see it. And girls, um, you have all control of how many people you see, so you can kind of mute the, the screens as well. So you're golden. We can see everything. Okay. Okay, so mindset shifts to move your business forward. I made it nice and colorful, so it's beautiful and fun. Okay, I saw this quote yesterday and I just thought it was perfect. So your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Mic drop. <laughs> So first, I feel like owning my story was a big part of how I started to gain confidence in this. Um, I feel like for so long, I thought I didn't have a story. Like I didn't have a major transformation. Like my transformation was apparent, but it wasn't something that I thought was as powerful as other people's or as um, shocking as other people's. Um, but sharing your, and owning your story really helps you connect with others. It helps you build that trust. Um, it helps you connect with your why and stay connected to your why. And then it helps you feel confident in who you are. So I feel like I started to really dig deeper and like Beachbody has been so therapeutic for me. And it's actually been really like cool to see myself like dig deep into who I really am and kind of who 
why I am the way I am, who I am as a person. And it really helped me, like, even just thinking back to my, like, childhood and the way that I grew up, like, I saw financial struggle my whole life. And it was just something that really lit, like, as I dug deeper into that, it lit this fire in me that was like, I have this powerful business right in front of me that I can build a future for my family that like, then, you know, I don't have to live, like, I don't have to let them go through kind of what I went through. And it really helped me just dig deeper into that. So not just the transformation story, but you can have more than one story to tell. You can have that story that, you know, this is the way I grew up and I'm ready to change that for my future family or, um, and then also really thinking about who you were before Beachbody and who you were, how, who you are now. That could be a month into Beachbody. That could be six months, eight months, whatever it is. But even the other day, this is a story that I'm holding on to right now. Like last week, Shay texted me at 8.50 p.m. to go dragon boat racing at 6 a.m. And I, me in the past would have been shitting myself like, no, like I, I can't get out of my comfort zone. I've never done that before. And I've been like this yeah, I'm down to do that. And like, just looking at those stories, like looking at all the stories and really appreciating them. Don't take them for granted. Those little things are huge. And looking at the transformations all the way through, if that makes sense. <laughs> so thinking about who you were before and thinking about who you are now, thinking about your upbringing, how did you grow up? How did that affect you? How did that make you, how did that end help you get here? stop trying to go with this alone. Seriously, you guys have to be involved in team events. Like it's crazy. For example, I remember like when I first started as a coach, I was terrified to go on my stories and talk. Like I wouldn't, I would actually record myself on like a video, like not on the Instagram video, but just like my actual camera. I'd record a video of me talking so I could like see if I liked it. And then I'd go to posted on Instagram and I would bail. I'd be like, no, I can't do it. Guess what? After my first super Saturday, the first thing I did was my story and talk about it because I was so fired up. So it just like, it, it lit something in me. And I was like, okay, this is legit. Like this is a community of people. This is, it, it, it fired me up. And that was the first time I was, I had the confidence to get on my story and talk face to face with myself to people on my Instagram. So that just was powerful for me. So making the effort to get on team calls is essential. If you're not doing that, you're, you're not, you're not going to be successful. You need people in this with you. Um, reaching out to your coach for help, reaching out to fellow coaches to do four hours for you, and maybe even asking for help, getting fresh invite ideas. I know sometimes it's nice to throw ideas around with other people. Um, and for example, like with, there's days like I come home after work and I'm exhausted. And guess what? At like 1 PM when I know I'm kind of hitting that like ugh wall, I'll message Sam or I'll message like somebody and be like, Hey, want a power hour tonight? Because I know that that's going to keep me motivated. That's going to keep me accountable because if I have a plan with someone else, that's going to power hour with me, then I'm like, okay, I have to do it. So don't try to do this alone. If you know you're falling off or you're feeling like, nah, I'm not going to do this tonight reach out to a coach and be like, Hey, power hour tonight, because then you have a date. You have a date with a friend. You can't ditch your friend. Like that's rude. So <laughs> it just keeps you more accountable. And, um, so if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Um, yeah. Right. Just going to look at the chat quick. You guys can see this, I guess. Okay, I'll read those after. I'll answer questions after so I don't get too distracted. Um, okay, changing your mindset from a selling mindset to a sharing mindset. Um, changing the way that you think about your invites to I have an amazing opportunity to offer you. Um, and I heard this at Summit and it's we've probably heard it in lots of team calls as well is that it's selfish not to share this with people. By you not sharing, by you getting in your head and worrying and then just like not sharing it with people, you're actually taking an opportunity away from somebody else. And I got thinking about this when we were at Clear Lake this weekend. I was like, this community at Clear Lake right now, like I wouldn't, none of us would be here if it wasn't for Brittany. Like if Brittany gave up, 
guess what? None of us would be friends. None of us would be on this call. Who freaking knows where I would be? I'd be in a dump somewhere. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, like there's just thinking about that opportunity. If one of us gave up, we wouldn't have each other. We wouldn't have this community. Um, and being confident in what you're sharing, you need to own and that's why owning your story is so important because you have that to think about when you're sharing this with others, because you get to say like, look how this has changed me. Like how could it change somebody else's life too? And stop thinking you're annoying people. This is, I've had to work on this a lot because I, I wasn't someone that was just confident all the time. Like I had to really work on that mindset. And, um, an example of this is even just the other day. Um, so I had someone really interested, she was, and then she said, no, so that's fine. It was July 31st. It was the end of the month. She said, no, not ready. A week later, I just, I, I could tell from my last message with her that she was so excited about it, but she was scared, but I just left it. But a week later I came back with a voice note with my genuine words. And I said, you know what? Like, I just want to let you know, I have another promo code. I know you were really interested in this and I just want to let you know I like I haven't given up on you. I'm here if you want to, you know, talk a little bit more about it, but if not, that's totally fine. So just knowing that people are scared. A lot of times they're scared. They're not you're not annoying them. They're just fearful and they need you to reassure them that you got their back. Like you're there for them. You're you're not going to give up. You're going to keep waiting for them. Um and that's why it's so important to follow up every single month every month, you guys, like you have to follow up with people that are interested. If you are like, no, they said, no, I'm never reaching out to them ever again, because like they said, no, then you're there. Then you're, they're losing out on an, an amazing opportunity. Almost all of the challenges I have are people that I followed up with. We know this by now. I mean, we hear it on all the team calls. Following up is what is, those are the people that you have to keep reaching out to. And I think about myself, like I watched Brittany for like two years and then Sam reached out to me and I ignored her. I said no to her. And then, you know, it's taken me like, it took me a couple of years, man. Like here I am, but like two years later, probably. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Keep your own story in mind. Keep your own fears, like what that you had in mind. And remember that people are human and they are going to feel that way too. Um, another quote I heard at Summit, if this is the answer stop treating it like an option. Like it's just a new way of life. Stop treating it like an option. I, like I said, the first whole year of my business, it was just an, like, it was just, I didn't prioritize it. I was like, meh, like it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't treating it like a new way of life. I wasn't treating it like a priority. I wasn't scheduling it in. And that's why my business didn't move forward at all. <laughs> so you need to stop treating it like an option. It is the, if it's the answer. So be that person that will do the hard work that 90% of people will not do. And I heard this in 5am club and 5am club has really made me realize that nobody is successful. Like 90% of people are not doing what they actually want to do because they aren't willing to put the hard work in. So we need to be willing to do the work that people won't do. Grind and hustle now for freedom later. I have reminded myself of this so hard. Like I've been exhausted since summit. Like honestly, you guys, because I've been like head down. Like I am getting up early. I'm doing this thing. And I keep reminding myself that this grind, this exhaustion that I'm feeling, it's going to lead to freedom one day. And just, and I, I've heard this in Kate Schultz videos before. I love Kate Schultz. She's just blunt and I love it. And she used to get up at 4 a.m. every single day, go work out, do her thing, go to her teaching job all day, come home and grind till like 9 p.m. at night and like nonstop. And she gained freedom in like six months. And I keep thinking about her story and I'm like, that, that could be me. That could be you. That could be Jade. That could be Taylor. That could be any of you. And it just takes doing the hard work. Um, season of hustle. Again, that's my mindset. It's the season of hustle. I can do this. I can do this for freedom later. Um, setting your business hours, waking up an hour earlier. This is kind of my general, like I kind of laid out my time frame because I know sometimes just to kind of give you an idea. And that's, again, it's not always perfect. 
there's days that I'm not up that early. And some days I'm, I work in the evening instead of in the morning. I'll do some in the morning, some in the evening. It depends on my day, right? Like it's flexible, but this is kind of what it looks like. Um, I try to prioritize my business in the morning so that I know that I get it done. Um, and then I can feel good for the rest of my day, knowing that I got that hard work out of the way. And trust me, it's not always easy, but like I said, if you want this, you'll put in the hard work, you'll grind, you'll hustle, you'll do those things that will, you'll thank yourself later for. Um, and having a long-term mindset versus that short-term gratification. Um, so you can't be comfortable and grow at the same time. You need to fall in love with the process and get caught up in the grind and be excited. And I kind of got this like point from just summit because I kind of, I thought about that. Like a lot of what, like what my fear was about going to summit was I was so fired up at summit. I was so excited, but I didn't want that just short term gratification. I knew I needed to think about this long term. Like this is one week. Summit is one week. And how am I going to extend my mindset to go longer than that one week? Like, how am I going to keep myself excited? Because I know that I need to stay in the grind. Like, I don't, like I said, some of it was something that I knew I had to make worth my while. Um, so getting excited, being excited about your routine. And I think that's why having a routine is super important because it helps you stay excited. It helps you stay motivated because you have a plan. You're not just floating. When, it, when I was floating through this business, it was exhausting because I knew in my heart, like I should be working, but meh, like I'm not going to. So then you're fighting with yourself and you're just more mentally exhausted than if you just set a routine, got shit done and felt freaking good about it. So just remembering how, thinking about how you can keep this exciting. And that might be again, reaching out to other coaches and having friends in this, going for coffee with fellow coaches, like me and Shay, when I wasn't working full time, we would arrange coffee dates to go work together. And that made it really fun. So even reaching out to someone that lives in the same city as you, um, so that you can help each other out, keep each other, keep it fun. And be okay with no. This kind of just goes into things I've already said, but just follow up, follow up, follow up. Constantly follow up. Someone says no. Okay. Don't, it's, it's a no right now. It's someone that just, keep moving on, keep moving on, circle their name. I write down everyone I invite and I circle the people that say, no, nah, not right now, but you know, but follow up. That's, it's important to keep track of those people so that you can follow up with them because a no is everyone. All my calendars have said no to me and they're, you know, you know how that goes. Um, yeah. So I kind of just wanted to go over quickly some strategies that you can implement. Um, right now, today, tonight. I know some of you ladies are ready to crush business tonight. So these are some things that maybe you can think about. And kind of how I really got into um, like what I implemented from Summit, what really helped me hit Diamond, um, creating urgency and FOMO. That's, I kind of did something like, I, I keep pointing at my screen like you guys can see me and you can't. <laughs> um, like, so yeah, like this picture here. Um, letting people see and get excited and like see that you're signing other people up and like having limited spots in your group or limited spots, especially with the promo codes. Like that's a great way to get people feeling like, Oh shit, I'm going to miss out on this. Um, and making it like that. So letting people really see like, Oh, I only have four left. Oh, they're going fast. Like letting people know that. Yeah. Creating that excitement, showing people that other girls are getting signed up and they should join you on that sharing value. Um, this is something I've, I've had to kind of do, I've started to do more of because I know it's a super important way to gain trust with people, but sharing like recipes, sharing your tips, your tricks, your tools, whatever you can do to add value, that's going to gain a lot of trust for people. Um, so this picture here that I shared, you can't, I guess you can't really see some of it because it's cut off, but I just shared some of my meal prep ideas. Um, I shared a picture of me with my little egg bites to look all cute. <laughs> and then I shared what I meal prepped for that week. Um, and I share recipes, share the recipes that go along with that. And that just helps people realize you're legit. You're helping them. You're sharing that value with them. Be consistent AF. How many times can we stress that one? 
I don't think I have missed these morning photos that I have here every morning. I actually don't think I've missed morning maybe once in the last at least six months. I've had my freaking yellow drink and my PD or some sort of quote or not quote, but just saying like, good morning or something related to how my morning has changed my life. Basically. Like I always try to add a little bit of that, like good morning and something about my morning. Um, cause people, then they see I'm showing up every single day. So it's super important to be consistent with your posts and not every day is perfect. Like we get that life happens. That's fine. But by being consistent, you're also trust with people. Um, totally going to say something else and it just slipped. Oh, so by posting my energize every morning, it makes it super easy for me sending like, um, explaining like my the challenge packs to people to say like that yellow drink, you always see me drinking in the morning or that yellow drink literally saved my butt for my morning workouts as you probably seen. So it's really, it adds that like it's easy then share that with people as well. And lots of people will reach out and be like, what's that yellow drink you're always drinking? Um, so yeah. And share the real, like, obviously I'm a wino. I share that all the time. That's who I am. Like people need to know you're a human. They need to know that you do things outside of fitness. Yes. It's important to show that you're sticking to a nutrition plan, that you've seen results and all that kind of stuff. But it's also important to be human and say, I love wine a lot. And whatever your guilty pleasure is, maybe it's cake, maybe it's chocolate. I don't know. Just making sure people know that you're real and you have interests outside of um, Beachbody. And even when I was in university and I was in my practicum, I would share, like I did this art for wellness class every single Wednesday and every Wednesday evening would share what we made that day. And that I feel also kind of built that connection. It was kind of this, this cool thing I got to share. Like I got to say, you know, I'm doing this art for wellness group for youth that have mental health challenges and like, look what we made tonight. So sharing all of your life, because that's really what connects and bridges that connection to other people. Um, and I, I totally forgot to mention my story. I started <laughs> coaching as a full-time social work student and then I was in my practicum full time. And I feel like my practicum really helped me gain confidence in just because I was able to share like that part of my life as well. It wasn't just studying all the time. It was actually things I was learning. And anyways, now I'm a full-time social worker. I was going to mention that in the beginning. And then Beachbody has taken me all the way through my new career, guys. It's amazing. <laughs> and okay, the coolest part though is, wow, I, this, you guys, this, team call stuff. I'm a scatterbrain. Um, this, the coolest part is that my practicum experience was really like up and down and my social work council, like I'm on the, I was on the student council. They kind of knew like some of the struggles that I was going through. And one of like, a lot of them were like, but how did you stay so positive? Like you were always like so happy and you were always showing up super happy. And I literally said to them, beach body, like a hundred percent. I was like, there's no way I would have gotten through the last few years without my workouts, without my nutrition plans, without my easy meal prep ideas, there's a mosquito on my face, um, without my team, without you guys, without this business. And again, that's part of my story. This shit got me through university. It got me through to my, now I'm a full-time social worker. And it just, it's incredible what this community has done for me outside of fitness. It's, literally helped me in all areas of my life and my new career. Um, sorry, side note. Um, but another thing that you guys can implement voice notes and videos that just is like a really good way to connect with people. And I know that lots of you probably heard this and it's kind of becoming more popular with, um, inviting and stuff like that. But that's another way that I like to follow up with people is if I know that I just reached out to them maybe a few weeks ago and I could tell they were sort of there, but they were hesitant. A voice note is a really great way to reach out in a very authentic way and just let them know you're still thinking about them and no worries at all because it just comes off more genuine and more, yeah, more genuine in that you're not, you're not going to feel as like icky with an annoying message. I don't know. Um, and sharing videos of the workout library, something I've been consistently implementing. And I find that that really helps as well, because you can just get on your computer, get your camera out and say like, Hey, look at all the workouts that we have. Like, it's just like Netflix, but all these programs, 
um, and then literally clicking them through the video, like look, clicking them through and showing them like, look, each this workout comes with the meal plan and showing them what your challenge group looks like and showing them what you're doing in your challenge group gives them that kind of brief glimpse into this world, but then leaves them with that FOMO of like, oh, that does look really cool. So those are just some ideas and things that I've been doing that have been working really well for me. Um, and that's all I have for the sharing. Now, how do I get out of share screen? I've done this before and how do I do it now? Um, Brittany, do you know how I get out of the share screen now? There will be a, uh, probably where that like pause thing is, it'll say stop share screen. Um, usually in the top, like middle part. Um, I don't know if, uh, oh, stop. Oh, here we go. I see it. There we go. Yeah. So that's, um, I see lots of chat messages here. Um, do you guys have any questions about anything that I just shared? Please unmute yourselves guys and ask all the questions right now because that was freaking ball. No questions. You want to know how I know every single one of you have a question right now is I do the exact same thing. When someone says, do you have a question? I go like this <laughs> and you know, like Taylor, Celine, Amber, Maria, Jenna, and um, who is it? Someone just signed off too. Cause they're like, Oh shit, I got to go. But like I watch all your lips do that. So ask your question now. We are a team. We are a community. No question is a dumb question. It can be about success club, all of the things. Um, Cassie asks, how many invites do you send a day? Thanks you, Cassie. Okay. I feel like that kind of varies. Um, my goal lately has been at least 20. And in the beginning, I was, I was very, I did the whole just like five invites a day. Like I started with that when I really started gaining momentum and lately it's been, I've been trying for 20 a day and I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like I said, my routine is, but that's my goal usually. And that's including follow-ups and stuff too, like invites and just follow-ups as well. Love that. And Jade says, how often do you go live? Um, like story, like just on my store, like stories, Instagram stories. Um, yes. Instagram stories. I, so I haven't really actually gone like live, live, but like talking on my stories that again, like really depends. Like I feel like lately it hasn't been as often. Um, I would say a couple times a week. Like I'm not always consistent basically because my mornings are pretty rushed. Like I'm usually, I will always share my morning when I wake up. Like I share my go-go juice, my PD, all that kind of stuff. And then I do my workout and I always share some clips of that. And then, um, sometimes I'll share like a little clip of like our challenge group that morning. Like, look at what we're doing today kind of thing, just to get that FOMO and then it really depends. Um, I feel like in the, it, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm very, depends on my day, on my mood. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, Amber just sent an incredible question. I'm super excited about this. Is how are you deciding when to sign up new challengers or coaches um, and how you decide to put them under you or the spouse account? Okay, well, fun fact, I signed up Ben as my spouse account in February, I think, when I was trying for diamond, but not really, because I sucked. <laughs> I was not trying, I was like, I think I like kept saying I was going for diamond because I knew that's what I was supposed to do. But my mindset, diamond is truly a mindset, you guys. And I was really not, I, I'm ashamed. I wish I would have been more into it, but I was very, yes, <laughs> but I, signed up Ben and I didn't put anyone under him because I wasn't really sure where I was really going. And, um, I recently, obviously like that's when I decided I'm hitting Emerald, I got him to success club and that was now it'll be, now it'll be more consistent, obviously putting people under him because I want to build him up now. Um, 
but I feel like for me, like it's important for me to hit success club because that's, I'm focusing on my account. But again, if you're trying to hit diamond, like this month for me, like Ben's at success club six and I'm at two. So like I put, I prioritized him. So I think it depends on like where, what your goals are and you kind of go from there. But I obviously from now on, I want to continue to build him up so that I can be confident that he'll stay in Emerald. So that'll change the game for me now, I guess. <laughs> exactly. And guys, just to kind of pair off of that for myself. So I run my account. I used to have a spouse account and then I have my second CBC. When you, so when you guys hit two star, you get to open another Brittany. You get to open another Jalen, right? And that's like literally like two stars where the money comes. Cause you're able to like bank on that. That's a whole nother story. But my biggest piece of advice is get your account to success club. Like minimum five, if not success club 10, before you start building, unless you know for a fact that like Shanique had a deadline, Shanique had a vision and Shanique was not allowing diamond to slip another day for, so she was like, dang it, he's getting there. And that's what she did. She drew that line in the sand and went after it. So that's my biggest piece of advice is when you have that date, you get them and guess what? She still has 10 days to get to success club 10 in her other business center. But that is going to be something that is like super paramount to make sure that you get yourself there before building the spouse account. Um, so yeah. Um, Maria says, what do you, Maria, are you so excited that I say your name right now? Like, I feel like that's super exciting as well. Guys, I put your name for like three years. It was <laughs> Um, what do you say in voice message when someone constantly is ignoring your invites, uh, when you're, when they were previously interested and you see that they've seen your messages? I feel like I get this all the time because it's a normal thing. People are going to ghost you even though they were super excited. I have, so I'm thinking of a recent example. I have someone that I sent to share. She was really, she like, we, we've been talking for a long time. Finally, she was like, yep, I'm ready. I sent her a share cart. This is probably like four months ago now. I will consider, I'll just keep, and she keeps it ghosting me. It's weird. It's weird, right? Like we think about like, why are you doing this? Like, I don't understand. Like you have the share cart and now you're ignoring me. Um, I will just message her. Like I said, every month. I don't care if you're seeing my messages and you're still ignoring me, that's fine. I'm going to keep annoying you until you want to unfollow me. Maybe, <laughs> you know, like, so I would just honestly say like, Hey, just want to let you know, like, I still haven't forgotten about you. I'm still not giving up on you. If you're ready to do it th with me this month, like I've got a spot saved for you, especially with the promo code. It's really, I've been really trying to say like, I only have one promo code left and I just want you to know, like, I know you were interested. So I have it saved for you if you want it. If not, totally fine. And just be really chill about it. Like, don't be super long and exaggerated. And I know, like, just keep it simple and say, like, I have it saved for you. I know you were interested. So, and make them feel kind of special in that way, I guess. Like, I know you were interested. So I want you to know, like, I'm still here. It's yours if you want it kind of thing. Um, and just, like, get used to that. Not get used to it, but it will, it's going to happen. And just continue to follow up because they're going to, they're going to sign up with you. It's just when. Just, just a matter of one. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, quickly, Taylor, I just answered your question in the chat. Taylor's question was, how do you make your Insta stories? Um, do you have extra apps and to use and make them quicker and stuff? Guys, the quickest way to use your apps, like your Instagram app and make them look cool, is just in the Instagram app itself. Once, this has been a non-negotiable for me since day one of my business, is once you have hit success club 10, that's when you can start playing on the pretty stuff. Um, the reason being the pretty stuff doesn't matter until you hit your goals and then you dive into the extras because coming from someone and I mean, like attracts like, which I mean is probably the tribe of 14 people on here. You guys could get all pretty lost on something pretty like Canva. So, that's why I made my Canva PowerPoint last night, guys, cause I'm avoiding the real work. Which is, exactly. Sorry, I should have said that, but that's true. <laughs> I love Canva. I love designing things. And I have to remind myself, like, this is not moving your business forward. Like you need to do the real hard, the not fun work. 
<laughs> 100%. So super easy. Word Swag Canva after you hit minimum success club five, but success club 10, if you're moving this business. Um, there was, ooh, Jenna had a question. How do you deal with people who talk to you for a long time, maybe sent voice messages or gone out to coffee with you and they turn you down? I feel like I'm on like Gossip Girl or like a relationship. <laughs> XOXO Gossip Girl. <laughs> um, I, I feel like, again, this is, something that's going to happen often, honestly. And it's just a matter of continuing to, continuing to show up on your stories, continuing to share your journey and continuing to reach out to them. Like I said, every single month, reach out to them. If they're still watching your stuff, if they're still liking your photos, if they're still engaging or anything like that, like you have a hundred percent full permission to keep reaching out to them. And I have only ever had like maybe two people block me ever. And that was just me doing my job. Like, I'm sorry if you are blocked. Like I, and, and you know what? You have to kind of get into the mindset of like, thank you for blocking me. Like sometimes I'm just like, thank you. Hallelujah. I can stop bothering you <laughs> because if they're still watching my stuff, like I'm going to reach out to them. That's just, that's my job. That's my job. And Honestly, in the, I've only actually ever had one person straight up say to me, um, this was someone who's constantly, wa like consistently watching my stuff. And I've only ever had one person that said to me, um, I, if I wanted to join you, I would have asked you already. So please leave me alone. Like, I don't want to join you. And she still watches myself every single day, you guys. Like, it's mind blowing. I don't understand it. And, and that's okay that's fine. You just have to like sort of piece out, piece it out and move on. And like, they'll come back around. I promise you they'll come around. And if not, they'll unfollow you and like, be okay with that though. Shanique, Hopefully that was a good answer. <laughs> it's been incredible and so valuable. And guys, I, I know you're all thriving off of this and thank you for asking the questions. Maybe next week we'll graduate to voicing our questions. Um, because guys, realistically, if you can't do a voice, your, share your voice on here, how are you doing on your Insta stories? How are you doing in your business? Mic drop. That just came to me. But guys in the comments below, because you're all using it right now and I'm not going to tell you to use your voice right now, but I want to know first off hands. Cause you'll, I can see you all. How many of you said no to your coach for the first time? How many of you said no to your coach three times? Okay. In the comments below, in the chat, in the comments below, swipe up and link in bio, um, in the chat, what was the post that they shared that made you change your decision? Comment it down below. What was that post that changed? For me personally, it was when I, so I blocked Virginia. I told Virginia to fuck off and never message me again. Apologize if there's kids cast. I'm so sorry. Um, guys, that's what I did. Told her to fuck off. Same girl that like Shanique's talking to right now. She's like, do not message me ever again. Guess what? I'm Jen's top earner on her team. Okay. Her post that she did, you guys, was the... She paid off her $500 credit card while she was in university with her one week paycheck of coaching. And I was like, I am in. So, um, yeah, guys, what was that? I was always watching Sam with her PD in the morning and I wanted so bad to have a morning routine. Loved it. Craved routine. Kayla, my story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're St. Bernard. <laughs> That's so true. St. Bernard and Jeeps is currently our team as well, guys. We have dog moms and Jeeps everywhere. It's incredible. Um, pictures from Summit. So community, getting her nails done. Um, dog mom stuff. Summit, Jeeps. Love it. Before and afters. Okay. 
can I give you something that is going to set all 14 of you free tonight? Is that, can I be honest? The thing that you said yes to, the thing that attracted you to this business, whether it was a dog, whether it was a Jeep, whether it was before and after photo, the community, or getting your nails done, that's what your tribe wants to see from you. The business building coaches that are going to come to your team and are going to allow you that financial freedom that you crave to buy yourself a new Jeep, to give your dogs the best house in the world with a big yard, that transformation that you're craving, your tribe is craving that too. And you need to lead from the pack first. You guys need to be consistent AF because every single one of you said no to your coach the first time, probably five times. A few of you said during the entire um, call when Shanique was talking that you guys unfollowed and followed and blocked and refollowed your coach. You have people doing that to you in this moment. Guess what? They want to see Kayla one year from now. They want to see Sarah one year from now. They want to see Melissa and Britt and Shanique and Jade and Taylor and Jalen one year from now. What are you going to do between now and August 20th, 2020? Wow, numbers aligning. Holy crap. What are you guys going to do to show up every single day to prove to that person that's watching you, your past self, to, to commit and be that person that they need. I want you to put in the comments down below, what are the two things that you are avoiding in your business that you are committing to for the next year to show up as? Is it the transformation? Is it actually hitting Success Club 10 so you can go get your nails done and we can celebrate the shit out of you on Thursday when you hit Success Club 10 and we get to see your nails done? Guys, like we could have like a team Manny Petty party on like Zoom if we wanted to. Like that could be a goal. But I want to know, <laughs> Sarah's like, I'm fucking in. Um, I want you guys to comment down below. What are the two things that you are avoiding to share on your social media that's holding you back from moving your business forward? And you all know what it is. It's that thing that you kept. If you guys watch my... Uh, story today or my live i talked about that thing that you keep in the back closet when you're like moving and you don't want to ever touch that box and it's just the box that moves from you with house to house to house until you actually unpack the shit and throw it out also i love that cass's kid heard me swear and he's heard worse from her hashtag tribe <laughs> Okay, guys, what are the things that are holding you back what's what's that thing that you need to share what's that goal what's that vision Comment it. How much financial freedom and I want from this business? The fear of people thinking money is icky. Love it. Hashtag book. You are a badass at making money. That needs to be on our team. So I know you're all thinking you guys can journal this out, but please keep typing it out. I have kind of like two points that I want to really highlight from Shanique's call. And of course, it was all in synchronicity today. Um, Sydney Maurer, she is, um, you guys know that our corporate mentor is Jake Story. He comes in, he cheers our team on, he's super excited for us to hit a big goal on Thursday um, and where our team is going to, to grow. And Sydney Maurer is the Jake Story of the US. And she was sharing on a call that she was before, um, Sorry, I got squirrely from the chat. Um, she was working at some other corporate job, mortgages. That's what she was doing, mortgages. And she was in this corporate job. She was making money. Her husband was making money. They were good. But she left work every single day crying because when she was 25, she didn't know why this was life. She didn't understand that she had the boy, she had the job, and she was so dang unhappy. She got a job with Beachbody Corporate and she wanted to do something interesting. She went into her thousands of friends or like 1,000 friends that were on her Facebook and she's like, there has to be at least one Beachbody coach on here. 
So she scrolled through all of her friends and she found the one beach body coach that was on her social media. And it happened to be someone she knows, obviously they're Facebook friends. So Sydney reached out and said, Hey, I'm at beach body corporate and I'm curious, why did you not invite me to a challenge group? Why did you not invite me to coaching opportunity? And the girl said to Sydney, your life is perfect. And I don't think that you need this. Sid said to her, guess what? I needed that. Little did you know, I was suffering from um, not only like hating her job, feeling super unfulfilled, but she also had a major eating disorder. Guys, you know Beachbody coaches stories because we share our stuff so people relate to us. We don't know what those people, those followers of ours, our friends on Facebook, what they deal with behind the scenes, right? You guys even know that with your close friends. You go to their house and then like three days later, they tell you what's actually going on. Or for myself, like my friends found out I was in an abusive relationship like two years later, right? You don't know what people are going through. So why are you taking away the opportunity for this to change their life? Why are you deciding that they don't get a chance to be a part of this tribe? To show up on August 20th when everyone's kind of sitting outside or in their offices. Guys, this is the most people on a team call we've had all summer long. And we have so many brand new faces and it is so exciting. And what is it that you guys like, why, why do you deserve, like, why do you get to decide someone else's destiny? That's why you need to understand that inviting is the best gift that you get to give to every single person, every single follower. And you keep giving that gift and connecting with them and inviting them until they block you and delete you and then join your team three years later. And the biggest thing to, to take away and, and, and unleash that armor from you guys is knowing that if I would have stopped at the first two people, and this gave me absolute chills when Shanique said this at the start, if I would have said I quit after the first two people said no to me, I would have quit on day two. If I would have stopped showing up every single day because my best friend said no to me, guys, we're currently in four star, or we were in four star qualification. I needed one coach to shine up. I went to my best friend. She said, no, guess what? I didn't want three star to drop. I went to somebody else. My best friend, since we were in grade seven said no to me. I could have packed this all up and said, see you guys. But guess what? There are just, just let the, let this know. Girly Games Nation with all of the discount coaches and business coaches and people that are a part of our tribe, 263 people. 263 people are a part of Girly Gains Nation. How incredible is it gonna be when Shanique's team is 263 people? How exciting is it when Kayla gets to have her tribe of 300 people? How freaking exciting when Girly Gains Nation shows up at summit next year in new orleans with 100 coaches that's my goal tossing it out there right now 100 coaches from girly games nation at summit in new orleans how freaking impactful is that and that's because you guys draw that line in the sand tonight and know that you get to give this gift forward you get to like the reason shanique is here and the reason shanique is growing and killing it is because this helped her in her professional career. And now she's like, dang, all the social workers need this. And from the social workers, I know, I know they need this. So I'm like throwing them to her. So share your stories unapologetically. And what I want to do before we take up way too much time of your guys' night, and I want to thank you for this, is on Thursday, this Thursday, uh, August oh my god it's twos august 22nd our team 
if we rally together and support our sisters, our team's going to five-star qualification. Our team is going to be a five-star diamond elite team. There has been mm, 10, maybe 11 teams in Canada who have ever done that. We get to pull that off on Thursday. We need to rally as a team for the next six weeks to hold that. We need, that means every single one of you are gonna be showing up, you're keeping your accounts active, you are gonna be inviting, and you guys are all gonna be Emerald coaches that you guys are helping your upline, whether it's myself, whether it is somebody else on this team, maybe it's Sam, maybe it's Shanique, maybe it's uh, Shay, maybe it's my mom, who's me? Um, it's Bailey, whoever your upline is, you guys, ask them, how do I help our team achieve this six week qualification? How do we rally together? Because guys, I wanna go into this qualification one time and one time only. And what I'm gonna to explain to you guys, which not a lot of people know, is when you go into a, a five-star diamond, what we say qualification, what that means is for our team to be recognized at Summit, at Leadership, at NLC, um, in Canada, in, on the national wake-up call, when they get to say Girly Gains Nation and it gets to be on the big screen at Summit next year, that means our entire team, every single one of you play a vital role in this. And that means we have to stay together as a five-star diamond team. All of our diamonds and Emerald coaches and active coaches need to stay active for six weeks straight without dropping. And dropping means going inactive or a coach quitting. That means you replace it because we're going for this big vision. And guys, this is exciting. And of course, it's going on the 22nd of August because twos are just my number. But this is a team thing. And if you're committed to this team goal, I just want you to put five star in the comments down below. I want to know that all, holy, oh, 17. I was like, there's 17 people on this call. I was like, I see like three. Um, that was just a chat. If you're committed to this five-star goal, comment it down there. Here's a beautiful thing, you guys. I don't see five-star as our end point this year. When I was journaling in that book yesterday, I said, Britt, how do you want to end this year? In the next 12 weeks, how, how do you want to do this? And I looked, and of course, 12 weeks, 11, 11. Numbers, we're on it, guys. Things are happening. 11, 11, I want our team going into seven star qualification. I want Girly Games Nation to end the year as a seven star diamond team. I want our diamonds and diamonds and like guys, literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 10, 11, 11 of you diamond coaches by the end of the year helping your coaches succeed because when you guys work for goals like this and like it explodes my heart to have people like committing to this goal and i'm going to start crying but this is so powerful and this is so much bigger than you and it's so much bigger than me it's girly games nation and what happens you guys when you work for your coaches goals you're attracting coaches who are gonna work so damn hard for your goals. And I think that is what is so powerful and so rewarding is when you guys are showing up for yourself and your business and you're showing up for your team and you guys are engaging in the team calls and you guys are engaging in the chats and the pods and everything on the, on the page. Like I want our team page to explode over the next six weeks. And with that, you guys, you're attracting people to do the exact same thing for you. And that's how duplicatable and abundant our entire team is and the community and the power that this has. So Shanique, I want to thank you so much for this call. Ladies, let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Like guys, fire it up. Let's go. I'm not going to cry, Amber. We need two coaches in our entire downline to be recognized as a five-star diamond team, and we will not stop until that happens. 
and we're going to hold this together and we're going to crush this and you guys are going to implement everything. And I want every single one of you, not only at summit in 2020 at new Orleans, but we're going to be partying our faces off celebrating our team then. And we're going to have the best dang five star, seven star elite team retreat ever. Thank you guys for spending your night with us. Shanique, thank you for the incredible tips. You freaking killed it. It is like nighttime in Manitoba. She's like, guys, I can't see anymore. I'm cold. I'm on the porch. So thank you guys. Let's go crush this. And here's the thing. Every single one of you have promo codes to go. And if you are committing to getting this last thing, Every single one of you, if you're committing to getting rid of those three promo codes by the end of this week, by Friday, helping three people, all of you guys hitting Success Club 5, I want you to put SC5 in the chat. SC5. And when you see someone's name pop up, I want you to reach out to them after this call, someone you resonate with. I want you to reach out to them and say, yo, Kayla, me and you, we got this. Let's show the rest of them. Let's do it, ladies. I love you. Thank you. Let's fucking crush this. I have like my window open. My neighbors are like, why does she get so excited on Tuesdays? So have an incredible night, you guys. I'm fired up. I'm probably not going to sleep tonight because I'm just going to do all the inviting. Love you. Go crush it. Let's hit success club. Let's get rid of those promo codes and let's go into five-star fucking qualification tonight. Bye, babes.